What's up everybody, Jackson here, and today I'm going to be talking about the horse care systems employed in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I'm going to recommend that if you do not want spoilers to walk away right now, I would highly recommend this if you plan on playing Red Dead Redemption 2, that you go into it spoiler free. I did, and it being my first Red Dead Redemption game, it was, <clears throat> it was a, a, an amazing experience, knowing like absolutely nothing about anything. I was surprised when I think other people may not have been surprised. I was shocked when others may not have been shocked. So that's definitely how I recommend playing this game. And so I just wanted to get that out of the way because I really don't want to spoil anything for anybody with a game like this. It would be the equivalent of like giving away Witcher 3 details of, you know, important shit without, you know, warning people. So that's what I would like to do. So anyway, let's talk about the horse system in Red Dead Redemption 2. So one of the first things I want to talk about is there's a video by Jim Sterling. I thought it was very well put and it, it, you know, I can totally see the point that he's making here, especially in relation to hunting and like other things that I'm going to be getting into in, in later videos. This is the beginning of a whole series. I fucking love this game enough. I've got lots to say on the subject anyway, but he said like it, it, he quoted John Cleese in one of the Monty Python. I think it was the Holy Grail. Where he said, does the fog make it funnier? And it's a very good point. It's a very good question to ask. Does this make it better? Like, little details, although nice aesthetically or whatever, or, you know, niche, I would say, in the case of some of the things put in here with the survival aspects of needing to feed your horse and keep its core up, health up, so that its, you know, outer, its actual life doesn't drain too fast or it takes more damage or things like that. Does it make the game better? And I'd like to put forth my argument. It's kind of contrast to Jim Sterling's. I, after I started playing the game, I had watched his video first. And all the things that he complained about, I was like, I actually really kind of like this. Not all of the things, but most of the stuff in relation to the horse. And today I'd like to put forth kind of my defense of the way that the horse was handled. And how, at the end of the day, this made, like, my horse, it felt like it was my horse and not my mount. Not my form of transportation, not, you know, something like that. There was a very real relationship that I grew to have with my horse, especially the horse that I received towards the end of the game. And it made it just, it, it made it so much better. So let's get into this. First and foremost, one of the first things that I remember Jim complaining about was you have to uh, brush your horse and this will keep your horse clean. And in doing so, it, do, it helps its overall health, basically. And you'll notice in Red Dead 2, the horse's uh, system work exactly like uh, Arthur's system. You have your health, your stamina, things like that. I don't think the horse, ha the horse doesn't have dead eye, but you'll see that bar on the outside of the circle and that's actually like your life or in the case of your horse your horse's overall life then you'll see his stamina and his overall stamina will be like you know around the edge then within that you have the symbol and this is filled with white and this is actually the core of your you know the overall core of you of that respective stat health and stamina so when, you, when your horse is dirty you'll notice a little red uh brush flashing over its heart this just means that its life is going to degrade uh, quicker, and also it's going to be less happy. It's going to be more moody, more likely to throw you off of its back when you're shooting, more likely to throw you when you're riding along and there's a rattlesnake all of a sudden. So the, this just, all you have to do is at a certain point in the game, you're going to receive a brush for completing a quest. You go up, you brush your horse a few times, and it just you can see the you can just see the dirt come off of it. Now. This is going to tie into the the best thing about it, in my opinion, and that is the bonding level. Now, the the the, the most games that I've played with mounts, aside from World of Warcraft, where it is just a, a cooldown that you know you can activate at any time and it just appears out of nowhere and you ride off on it. It's a mount. It's there to increase your movement speed and nothing else. Uh, I I would say Roach in The Witcher Three. Now, the Ro Roach in The Witcher Three got a lot of flack. He is he, and one of the things that people complain the most about, and one of the only things that I really had a problem with, I know my buddy Canby mentioned this, is that like when you would whistle for Roach, he'd just show up in the most random worst place possible, right? Like in the backyard of someone's house, and like now it's fucking like you can't get him out. And now you have to run off in the woods and whistle again until he magically reappears next to you. Uh, one of the things Red Dead 2 did with this is 
you as you so as you increase your bond with the horse and you can do this several ways like i said you can brush it you can pat it you know say th you know like good job buddy while you're riding it you can click in the L the left stick and this will you know calm him if there is like a snake or something around and just riding the horse getting to know your horse through long trips from a to b and this all of these things and feeding the horse obviously and these all of these things make the horse uh, bond closer with Arthur and it makes it so that the horse is less likely to throw you as you gain these and you also unlock new moves like power sliding you can rear your horse up and it'll kick and stuff like that I'm sure you can use that to kick people so it's just you know you'll unlock new moves and things like that but mostly your as you increase your bond level your horse gets faster your horse gets uh, beefier has more health and the more most important thing is the horse starts to trust Arthur more this is really important because when you really think about this and the 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 painstaking effort that Rockstar put into realism here it, I feel like it's not wasted because if you were an outlaw living in the old west and you know moving from camp to camp surviving off of the wild hunting animals and all of these things like you may not be around your gang all the time. You may not be around your friends, hell, even your woman all the time. But you know what you will be around all the time is your horse. You're going to be around your horse like it's going to be there. And at that point, this isn't like a car. We, we, look, at, we look at these horses and there's we, one thing that we don't understand that isn't put forth in games like The Witcher or games like even uh, Metal Gear Solid V or other games that have a companion, or fucking a per another perfect example, Assassin's Creed Origins, where it's just a mount. It's just a mount. Now, I'm not going to say Roach doesn't grow, you know, affect, you don't grow affection with Roach. You spend much more time with him. He is the horse that you get. You don't, you know, swap him out like a skin in a video game, like in Assassin's Creed Origins. But I'm just saying, like, it always almost feels like, okay, Roach is more of a form of transportation than he is a living, breathing character. And with this sense of realism that they put into this game, you, you start to feel like this is legit. I would need this horse to trust me, and I would need to trust him just as much. It would be important that we have a symbiotic relationship of master, horse, you know, friend, you know what I mean, almost family. Because the horse is going to be there for you whenever you need help, whenever you need anything, the horse is going to be able to take you where you need to get help. The horse is going to take you where you need to get food. The horse is going to pack your meat from the animals that you've hunted back to your camp. So, like, the horse is going to be your best friend. In this, if if you're throwing yourself back there and you're imagining this to be real. And in that instance, you would most definitely need your horse to trust you. And so, if you run up and say you just run, you're on the run, and you grab a random stranger's horse, you steal that horse and you start riding off, this horse doesn't feel like your horse. It will immediately fight you even while you're getting on it. Sometimes they'll outright buck you off, especially if there's gunshots and things going on around or if you just shot their master off of their back. They're going to fight you every step of the way. They're going to be likely, more likely to throw you. They're going to be less durable for you. They're going to be slower for you. And they're just, and it's all based on this horse bonding level. This horse doesn't trust you. This isn't your horse. He's not familiar to you. You are not familiar to him. And that is a very real thing that, that happens realistically with a horse. You have to earn a trust with that horse. And the horse must be well trained in order to accept other people. And even then, if, if that horse saw its owner get shot, and the dude who just shot its owner run up and jump on its back, it's going to fight him. It's going to try to buck him. It's not going to ride for him the same way that it would ride for its master. But in that same scenario, say you're on the run and you got your mount out there and you have a max bonding level, that horse is going to trust that you know what's best. And when you hit your L3 stick and you tell it to calm down, it's going to be vastly more effective at bond four than bond one. It's going to um, uh, be smarter for you because it's not going to be pulling to the left or to the right, which can cause you to crash into objects and lay you on the ground it's going to have more health and it's going to be faster and be able to run much farther at max bonding so in 
how do you when you have this in place how does rockstar make this bonding feel real well they have you brush the horse because the horse would need to be cleaned and you could also alternatively you can just ride your horse through a lake or a river if it's deep enough the horse will become clean that way you you're going to need to feed your horse and not just like sus sustenance like s substantive you know healthy diet like here's some hay here's you know an apple you're also going to want to treat them with a sugar cube every once in a while right because like i know that fucking milk bones are shitty for my dog but he gets them all the time because i love him you know he's part of my fucking family and that's how, exactly how a horse would be exactly like a horse would be and also you're just going to need to ride them and spend time with them and the longer you ride them the farther distance you go the more encouragement you give them the more treats you give them not only is your bonding with them going to increase but so is the whistle and i kind of trailed away from that point but that was the point i was making with roach is when you would whistle for roach he'd just appear out of nowhere and a big complaint i heard about the horse in red dead 2 was that there was a whistle range on this now I did not notice this more than a handful of times at at the end of the day through my playthrough maybe a handful of times i noticed that i was too far out of range to get my horse and that was always on hunts always on hunts because i would leave him well out of where i knew the legendary animal to be and i would then be traveling so far tracking the legendary animal that i would out outrun out my horse and almost all of those times that it happened, my bonding was below three. Once you hit max bonding, that distance increases. And it increases each bonding rank you get. And it's, it's almost like the horse is more attentive to you at that point because it trusts you and you're more readily in its thoughts because it's grown accustomed to you because you've bonded with it. And it's this sort of thing that I, I understand where criticisms can come into play for people like does it make it funner to do this do that do that do that well I would I would argue back does it make it worse and if it doesn't make it worse but that that's the thing it's entirely subjective I personally I enjoyed the shit out of this system I wanted to make this video and I'm about to get into real spoiler territory here so if you're if you're not if you're not ready for spoilers walk away now there's a character in the game named Hamish, and I can't remember his last name. It's, he's just, you're riding along, and you find this guy, and he's laying on the side of the road, and you notice that he has one, one of his legs is gone. And as you talk to him, he explains to you that his horse got scared by a, a snake and threw him, and he's got this very stubborn kind of attitude towards the horse, but you can tell that it's coming from, from a place of affection. The, the horse's name was Buell. And so he charges you with the task of, please, you know, will you go get my horse? Arthur's like, sure, you know, because he's being a gentleman this playthrough. He's being a nice guy. So he goes and he helps Hamish get his horse mule back. And upon returning, um, the prosthetic leg, because that was another thing I forgot to mention, the prosthetic leg was tied up in the saddle. So the poor guy couldn't go get his horse because his, his he had lost his prosthetic. So he couldn't you know hop all the way down because the horse was quite a while away a ways away and so you get his horse back you get his leg back and he's like thank you so much you know and he invites you to go hunting or fishing sometime later you accept this and you go through a series of quests where you fish you know certain fish and you hunt certain animals and the whole time you start to get to know hamish better and it's so cool because the way that he's describing his horse this whole time hamish buell is actually how he turns out to be like stubborn but stalwart and like you know there's this there's this sense of like unconcernedness and well-deserved rest about this man and when you talk about his leg he, you know you probe deeper there and you find out that he lost it in like the equivalent of Red Dead Redemptions to the equivalent of our Civil War. Since this is sort of a fictional place, but it mimics reality, you know, how Rockstar do. Anyway, so you find out, and he's, and you ask him, like, you, you show him sympathy. And in that moment, he was like, I had a friend who was sitting next to me who was obliterated by this. And he said, so by my estimation, I'm doing just fine. And 
it's this and many other little conversations with Hamish that make him such an endearing character. And you grow to you grow to get excited when you're like, oh fuck, new Hamish quest. You know what are we gonna hunt this time? And it leads to the point where Hamish is gored by a bull and or a, a bull, a wild boar, a massive massive boar. He's gored by him and he he passes away that way. And as he's dying, he says to you, he says, you know, will you take Buell and look after him? Like I know I've you know talked shit on him a little bit, but. He's a really good horse and I'd want you to have him, Arthur. So from that moment on, like Buell was my horse. I used him all the way up until that moment at the end when we lost him. And when we, when I lost Buell, it was seriously as rough a moment as when Arthur passed away. And it was that sort of like, holy fuck, you get invested in this, this horse and you see Arthur lean over and you know that his time's coming soon. I'm not going to get too much into that because that's going to be a separate video. But you know his time's coming soon. And now Buell is passing away and you, Arthur just whispers, thank you. Like, that moment right there, I was just like, dude, the horse system in Red Dead Redemption 2 is almost flawless. Almost flawless. There was one problem I had. And that was the AI autocorrect on the horse. Now... Logistically, I can't pound this too much because I feel like at the end of the day, the the AI pathing, what it does, let me explain, the autocorrect the system. I don't, I don't know exactly what this is called, but when you're riding and there's a stone in front of you, like your horse will drift to the left or to the right based on like, I, I don't know what exactly, but the thing about this is it's realistic. A horse wouldn't need you to tell it to move to the left around a rock, a big boulder. Like, you know, you could give it direction, but the horse is smart enough to be like, oh, look at that. I better go this way, you know, and you'll give it a little direction and pull it in that way. But the thing, the point is, is that that's where it's kind of realistic. Now, where it fails, and it, this is like, I'd say nine out of ten times this thing functions beautifully and it's actually a heaven sent. There's times when I would have crashed into a tree or a, a separate tree where I swerved around it. But there's a couple of instances, I, there's just a couple of instances where it fails. Uh, one, first and foremost, is when you're on the road and there's multiple other people on the road with you. So during the gang rides, things like that, if you're not doing cinematic camera, it can be very difficult to control your horse because it's automatically going to be trying to get away from them, which is going to force you off to the side of the path a little bit. Then it's going to be forced back in and you'll find yourself actually riding into your fucking teammates without meaning to, without directing the horse to go that way. The Another problem is when the other passengers are coming towards you and you go to swerve out of the way and it, it's like there's a priority given to avoiding traffic on the road over things on the side of the road so there's been times where my horse will swerve off and hit it hit a rock or something and literally die <laughs> that happened to me and that was frustrating i wasn't able to reload and get the horse back um, it wasn't a super expensive horse, but it was a horse that I had had for a minute, and I was, I think I was almost max bonded with, and it's had the name of my real life dog, so <laughs> just to <clears throat> add insult to injury, and so that sucked, but that was one time out of numerous times where I was, the horse was swerving things, and it was fine, 100% fine. So I would say like nine out of 10 times, you're not going to have a problem, but there is almost always going to be a couple of instances that, you know, that one time your horse is going to do this autocorrect sort of thing to try to avoid something. And instead it's going to end up badly for you. And so those are my thoughts on the horse. I wanted, I think it deserved its own video because it's such a unique system all the the ways that you can get them you there's stables that you can go to you can customize how they look you can train them in the wild you can it's it's pretty awesome dude the horses and i think they did a great job with realism in this aspect to where i felt like when that moment hit when buell died i because of the setup of hamish 
and the quest all the way there and then you having to earn that horse's trust and ranking the bond up to rank four and that takes time that horse is with you for a while you're cleaning it you're looking at it you know you're you're feeding it you're caring for it only to then at that moment see him die like that was rough and that was something i didn't see coming at all and so those are my thoughts let me know down below what you guys thought about that and more red dead shit too to come fucking love you guys Come on, brother. Let's go. Give me a second. Come on. Push, Arthur. Thank you. Arthur! <laughs>